few. Um, hopefully everybody's doing well tonight on this lovely Monday evening. If you weren't here last night, I uh, casted last night as well. If you want to go back and watch that set, it is in the VODs. It will be posted to YouTube probably tomorrow or Wednesday. Along with this set, we'll go on YouTube as well. So go check those out. You can find all that lovely things in the link tree along with like patch reviews and all that good stuff and the podcast. Uh, make sure to go check all that out. We are recording the new episode of the podcast tonight after I get done casting and gaming a little bit. So it will be out tomorrow. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of talk about uh, worlds for Overwatch and League of Legends. So make sure if you have any questions or things you want to put in the hashtag guest questions chat, you can go put it in there for me or you can just DM me. Uh, so I have those for later. I know Kenny already DM me a question to to ask on the podcast for our random question of the week so make sure to go check all that out but other than that uh we were gonna have a chair one and chair two tonight unfortunately my chair two uh ended up having to uh, go to bed just couldn't make it this late and that's completely fine so we're gonna hop in we're gonna solo cast uh you know the good old specialty here and uh yeah if you have questions suggestions all that good stuff make sure to let me know we will be hopping into picks and bans momentarily uh, after I move my camera because that's something that I should do. Uh, move it right up here, right in the middle for a little bit uh, because I need to get a picks and ban screen made, chat. That's something that needs to happen, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm lazy, and I just haven't got around to it. But let me pull up these match IDs. Uh, game number one, backslash, replay. Uh, we have one, two, ah, stupid bug, seven, four, nine, eight, nine, three, four, two. We'll hop into game number one. I have been told about one pick in this set. I don't know the results. I don't know anything like that, but I have been told one of the picks uh penguin pimp can you let me know are you guys are you guys the kappa's food fighters is that who you guys are why i fix my volume and stuff so i can fix it in the spectator settings i'm assuming that's who you guys are but i don't know first ban hades uh we talked about this last night hades isn't a really good spot right now uh, basically dominating the game at in casuals and conquest and rank the whole nine that god is just absolutely dumb uh just a crazy win rate right now it's popping off so it's the first ban here for i believe the kappa's food truck food fighters sorry god if i could read that'd probably be good uh nope i thought i had a dm and i did not you huang ban and not surprised to see that here. Yu Huang, just a very controlled damage mage. Very good in the mid lane right now. Uh, not surprising to see that ban come out here. Uh, followed up by a Daji ban here. And Daji is a very... Even even with the nerfs, I think it did slow down her early game here um, with the nerf to her ultimate with the cooldown. But overall, I still think Daji is just still really, really good. We see that with a, followed by a Guan Yu ban here. Guan Yu, just been very good in the solo lane. Get that Fade Bless too. It's a little bit tankiness going on, especially with Mana Core Spikes, and then you're doing a lot for your team. Putting out the damage, putting out the heals, and you're tanky. You get the best of all, all the worlds there with a Guan Yu. And finally, uh, last ban of Phase 1 here for the Kappa's Food Fighters is going to be Vulcan. Uh, Vulcan, as I witnessed last night, uh, in, in as Asmore mentioned in the chat, and... <laughs> against our, our master's non-quest opponents. Um, Vulcan is good. Does lots of damage. In the hands of a master's player, uh, you get beeped and booped and bopped uh, off your merrily way to the gray screen. So not a bad ban here. Uh, just tons of damage. The the change to the backfire not being able to be affected by cripple is really good. And overall, just a very good objective secure mage to get off the board here. Um Curious to see what is the last ban here going to be. It's going to be Thor. Thor has risen through the ranks after the buff to his wall. And now we're seeing him banned away here. And I'm a huge fan of Thor. I think Thor is honestly a little bit underrated. And you all know what time it is. Oh my goodness. There's a Kepri locked in for Majin's team. And that means we have to take a, a momentary break uh, before, you know, before we hop into the game on the card art. Uh, we'll get a good old uh, Kepri Bezos look here in a second. 
So first pick Kepper here, that's going to be followed up by the Cabracken Cupid pickup. Really good dual lane. Uh, obviously, Cabracken could go, you know, mid, support, solo jungle. Uh, I'm going to assume it's going support. I'm going to assume that's the dual lane with this Cupid Cabracken here, which is going to be feeling really, really good. Um, but we will have to see how that pans out. Uh, Cupid, probably the best hunter in the game right now, even though did receive some nerfs on the fields of love uh, to make it where that slow is now 30% instead of 35. So unless you fire and hit somebody directly in the center, they can walk out of it. Uh, next two pickups here are going to be Pele Kurnanos. Kurnanos on the rise has just been very good in the current meta as a mid laner and as a carry. Uh, you know, I, I always talk about feeling good about flex picks in the first phase here. Um, followed by this Pele Pele just... You know, very good jungler gets that initiate, has a really good dive, can just blow up a carry. And I, I like this pick here. I think it goes good with the Kepri. You have that ult that you can bring Pegpul back to you. Uh, we saw that last night a few times. It's going to be feeling feeling good. Uh, last pick before the second ban phase is going to be a Giannis. A little bit surprised to see it. Uh, we Obviously, we did see him receive a slight buff, but really haven't seen him be particularly on the rise as an actual pick here. Uh, so they're not really holding back who their carries are in the mid and the carry role with this Giannis lock-in. But we will have to see what is their first ban going to be here coming out in phase two. And I'm curious to see what they go after. They're going to go after the Baba Yaga. They are not sold that this is a Kernanos mid. Um, so they're going to take the Baba Yaga off the board, which I think is a fair pickup here. Uh, Baba Yaga does put out lots of damage. And this is followed by a Neja ban for the Kappas. And honestly, Neja fairly good right now in the right hand. So not a bad ban here. Morgan Le Fay, actually a really surprising ban here. I did play Morgan Le Fay last night. I do think she is good. Uh, I don't think she is necessarily in the meta. So maybe they just got a feeling, hey, they, they know something I don't about mid lane here. And maybe that's a comfort pick they're worried about or something like that. But Morgan Le Fay is the one that comes off the table here. And the final ban of the set is going to be Ravana. Uh, just not wanting to deal with that, that engagement here. And now this is followed by a Kali lock-in. Kali, the feast or famine jungler uh, that you have to worry about. If it gets going early, it's going to be going late. And they're going to lock Cthulhu into this along with the Amusen Cobb. So again, we have this double hunter comp. We've been seeing this a lot. Uh, in pro play and just in comp play in general. Um, but this Cthulhu pick is interesting into what's going to be a Kali Bastet. Uh, you know, Kins is going to be a thing here. They're going to look to shred down this Cthulhu if you're daddy's succubi. So let's go ahead and get the team names put into place real quick. I did not receive clarification uh, on who's who. But I'm going to assume... This is what it is, and if I get corrected later, uh, you know, I get corrected later. We'll see how it goes. But let's hop in to game number one. And as we do that, you know, we got we got to play the Capri Bay as a song, dude. We got to do it. Got to do it. S U P P R T. Oh hey, I hope he's on my team. Kefri, Kefri Bezos. S U P P R T. Oh hey, I hope he revives me. Kefri, Kefri Bezos. Come on, Kefri, you can do it. Release OP and there's something to it. Met us, why? Shell us now. When I die, you're the rising dawn now. War flag and benevolence and get other gods can get abducted. Steal their kills, take their titan. Come on, Kefri, get them! All right, you guys are welcome. That is a, a quality, quality parody song uh, based off of Bo Burnham's, uh, you know, Bezos. And I just realized, uh, boop. Let me do one thing here. Get that out of the way. And there we go. There we go. All right. Let's get everybody moved around here. Um, got Bastet and Solo. Giannis mid. There we go. Oh, easy peasy. Um, Cthulhu. I know that. This is what I know. The question is, where is Kernanos going? 
Kronos is going duo. Okay, that's what I thought, but this wanted to be safe here. Um, looking at the builds here, nothing too crazy to start off with. We do see, again, we usually see this with the supports when I'm casting, is one goes Benelevance and one goes Sentinels. So we'll see how that pans out for the supports. Obviously, the mid laners are going to be different here, one being physical, one being magical. We do see the blue stone coming out here for the uh, Muzikov, which is going to feel pretty good uh, getting that dot damage going. And then we see a Mannequins for Kali, the Eye of the Jungle here for the Pele. And then finally for the Soul Laners, we see Bastet go the Blue Stone here. It's going to be feeling really squishy. And we have the Cthulhu picking up Tainted Steel saying, hey, I'm not going to let any of this healing get online. I'm just going to shut it down. And that feels pretty good on the Cthulhu here. Both teams go for the red to speed start here. Red to yellow start, starry, uh, you know. Hog down here, and it looks like Daddy Succubi do have a little bit of a head start here to the duo lane, but not by much, just a little bit of a smidge here, but they will clear it relatively quickly with this Kabrak and this slamming down the Trimble uh, in the middle of the wave. So level two online here for Daddy Succubi. Over in the mid lane, we do see that Daddy Succubi is looking for the, the mid lane pressure while over on the right side of the map, we see Pele just come over and say, Hey, what's up, Bastet? And the best Gary looking for something there. But Kali goes in here crazy onto Skull. Skull has to beads out. We'll just escape by barely, barely any health here. The mannequins did tick away a good chunk of health. Uh, towards the end there, the best Gary is making the rotation in. Looking at the blue Dumbo. And really, this is not a good place to be if you're a Yanis. Yeah, you can teleport out. Luckily, there's no knock up there for the best Gary yet. Scepter fight is happening over on the duo side here. And now we have uh, Gundar just chunking away. Majum will go and pick up the Scepter here. But look at this. Crazy has made the rotation over to try to get a gank on the Majin. And they body block him in. Now the Tremble's coming through. Majin's in trouble. Is he going to be able to abduct his way out? But will end up falling here to Death X the King. Uh. A very long time comp player that I've played through several different leagues now uh, throughout the years. So shout out to Dex Left the King. Um, always good to good to see him around and still playing. AMC here. Into this Giannis. We'll have to see how this matchup plays out. Giannis does have a good bit more movement ability, escape ability, and just is going to be able to rotate more than this AMC. So that's one thing to watch out for as the match progresses is is the blue dumbo able to make use of this Giannis rotation they will get the the red buff dropped here Mach actually walks away and lets skull finish that out it's going to head over the duo lane as quickly as possible um and really the only deficit right now is the first blood that went over to daddy succubi with that gank over on the duo side we're going to see the best gary sit over here and make sure that blue buff goes the way of Penguin, which is going to feel pretty good. Obviously, they got Oh Wishy's blue buff as the Bastet is uh, going to be a little bit mana hungry uh, with Penguin getting to claim both of them for themselves. I'm curious to see how this pops off with the Cthulhu, who's going to be relatively tanky as the game goes on into this Bastet, who is an assassin, and sometimes assassins do struggle in this solo lane uh, if they get a little bit too ahead of themselves. Good damage coming out here from both teams. Uh, obviously, yeah, he's sucking by on the losing of this battle currently, but they do have a good wave clear coming out. Uh, they are looking for something, but Mod's just going to push up here. He's not going to let them walk forward and clear this wave. Really good zoning here to keep them occupied with that. But over on the right-hand side, oh, Wishy and Crazy do pick up Penguin right on the edge of that tower, it seems. Another gate coming through for Crazy. And this is the thing you have to worry about if you're facing off against a Kali is when Kali's getting, you know, these kills online early, and obviously these are both assists, but getting kills online for their team. Those assists do go a long way uh, and is going to start allowing for some, some more ganks as the game goes on. Alpha Awaken gets turned into a goat and gets put down, and now Death That's the King is the next one being looked at. Is going to be able to escape here as the best Gary did come over for a rotation looking for the gank and it was successful they get one and now the scepter is coming up too they will get that off the map as well 
And that's gonna be feeling pretty good to get that return kill and return assist here on that, uh, you know, going. Pele did pick up the kill. Assist goes to Gundar, but still. It's gonna get, feel good getting a little bit of catch up, not falling behind to this Kali. And that's the biggest thing you can ask for. As we do see slight level leads in different roles here. Daddy Succubi do has a slight lead over in solo side. Uh, but they are a little bit behind in mid and a little bit behind in carry. So we'll see how that ends up panning out as Gundar is just farming away, getting these left side harpies as well. Uh, Majin looking to harass the red buff here. <laughs> is this going to have to scuttle away on this Kepri? But now Daddy Succubi have to be wondering here, is there another play to be made? They're looking for Crazy. Crazy's going to go for the speed buff, but I assume Crazy's going to get real active after clearing that. Uh, and probably look for something either in mid and solo side again, if I had to guess. Blue Dumbo and Alpha Awaken are looking to contest these Harpies. And here comes Crazy to the mid lane. The portal's down, but the Kabrakan wall is even better. Majin in trouble again. Gets body blocked. Has to use the res on himself. It's going to get procced, and they're going to take him down. And this time, the kill goes over to the Blue Dumbo. Kali just facilitating a lot of damage here. And a lot of setup for kills. Really well played here by crazy penguin goes in the alt really low in health oh wish he has to jump away and now it's penguin who's gonna be in trouble i don't know if they're gonna get here in time to stop this back but oh they thought about it they are gonna let it go fortunately enough for the kappas there is no back camp farm for them to be taken but look they get wards up this is daddy Sekipai looking for this vision they want to know what's going on in the jungle on this side as the best gary picks up a solo kill over on the cupid and this is the one thing you have to worry about if you're a carry is this Pele coming over and just ulting in and killing you and that's exactly what happened there i know we missed it on the camera but it's the one thing you do have to worry about with this Pele is hey if she can come in and ult you and you, your dash is down, you're probably dead. You're going to get knocked up. You're just going to eat some Pyroblast and have to call it a day. Uh, Majin clawing down some wards here. As Skull is on top of a ward. But they do have a small vision shard there as well. So really good vision by both teams. But look at the vision control here by the Kappas. The food fighters are really just getting great warbridge coverage out all the way across the middle of the map here. A uh, little 2v2 fight going on, but Gundar is going to be looking to fight Death X the King here. Very soon, Death has to dash away, and this is going to be another free scepter for Gundar, if I had to guess. The Kappas are really well positioned here, looking to take out these Harpies, but look at this. It's a four-man rotation over to Gundar. They, had the, they walked across wards, but Goon stayed anyway. Gets blinked on. There's the stun. Great beads, great, even better ultimate. Oh my goodness, hits three with the ult, but isn't going to be able to get out. Needs to try to get to Majin for the ult, but I don't think it's going to happen. Gets put down, and that's a four-man rotation here to pick up the Kernanos. They are going to secure the purple buff, not let that farm go away. But great rotation here by da Daddy Succubi. I mean, they must have just either... They must have just missed this ward here. Oh, they did. Oh, wow. I mean, just unfortunate there for Gundar that the they don't walk across that ward on the way over. The I thought there was another one right up here, but I guess it must have just fallen off. But now, you know, look at the vision control here by Daddy Succubi getting deep wards here. They want to know what's going on about these camps. Crazy showing up to mid, but isn't going to be able to stay long. Skull is level 9, and if Majin gets an abduct off, that's a free stinger and a kill. Majin will start the red buff while Skull goes and clears the wave real quick. And that's going to be quick work here for an AMC. Now on the way to this red buff, they're going to be able to secure that. But so far, so good here for both teams. There is a slight level lead, or, you know, gold lead for Daddy Succubi. They're about 2,000 gold ahead. Um, but that's not, not incredibly crazy. They will be able to come back from that as long as they don't keep getting picked by this Collie, and look what the best Gary's doing. Looking to find out where the Cupid is. The Cupid, there's the dash, and here it goes. There's the Fields of Love, but it's not gonna matter. The best Gary ults right in, knock up, Pyroblast, call it a day. As the Cupid gets burned down once again. And now, we're back to this little bit of a farm game going on. I am curious of, are they gonna look to put solo pressure at any point? 
Oh, wish he does have a slight lead as Penguin is going to try to clear this blue buff. I don't know if he's going to be able to. Mod is on the way in, though. This could be huge here for the Kappas. Oh, no. The Abduct's going to be off the mark here. But look at this over on the left side of the map. Crazy getting active again here as a jungler. Looking to try to see, can they get Gundar for another kill? Gundar's going to walk up. No, decides against it. The smart move there. Because if he walks up too far there, that's going to be an instant kill uh, by the Kabrak and Kali combo there. Unfortunately, the purple buff will fall in favor of Daddy Succubi on that left-hand side of the map. But look at what the Kappas are doing. They pull a Pyromancer. They say, hey, you're going to make put the pressure over on left side. We're going to make it worth our while and get some free gold. But again, Majin gets walled off here. Skull is also in trouble. Majin waiting for the ult. There's the ult. Now they're going to pull him back to the tower. They're going to try to save him here. They got to dodge the Kali. Kali ult is out. The immunity is there. Oh my goodness. Yonasalt comes through a little bit off the mark. Doesn't end up picking up any, any kills there. I don't think it got any damage on the Pele either. Now this Trebuchet doing work in the mid lane. Getting really good damage onto this tower. But this is a call you have to call as the Kappas, is you know this Kali has no ultimate for a considerable amount of time. You need to try to, you know, know where she's at. And if she comes in again, that needs to be your main focus. You need to take her off the map and put her behind. Um, the best Gary does have a level lead here, along with Skull in the mid lane. Uh, really, the only person behind right now is over on the solo side. Penguin's a smidge behind. And, you know, same thing with Majin, just very little, nothing actual worthy of noting it's just slight level leads here for daddy sucky by in those in those roles but other than that pretty even despite there being a gold lead of 1500 gold in favor of daddy sucky by and we're taking a look at builds here you know devos almost stacked for the hunters we do see that mana core spikes already online for the blue dumbo and that's going to be feeling really good on this cabrack and any extra damage you can offer yourself or your team is going to be huge uh, take a moment here as the best Gary does walk up to try to invade red buff isn't going to be able to do so we already see crate or sorry the blue Dumbo is working on a staff of Mirrodin really early we love to see it. the items absolutely insane for the mid lane but look at this blue Dumbo is making a rotation over they're looking to see if Kurnos is anywhere can they catch him out they want Gundar again really focusing a lot of pressure on this duo lane is Daddy Succubi, which is kind of surprising. We don't see that too often. But here's the knockout. Blue Dumbo is going to be able to reach the wall. It does just by the... Oh, my goodness. A smidge of health. Probably, I don't know, like 50 to 100 health there. As Gundar now in trouble. Gets the ultimate off. Crazy doesn't have an ultimate. Here comes Best Gary. Comes in. The ultimate just comes back up in time to keep Kali alive for the time being. But the Best Gary puts him down. And now Alpha Awaken looking to try to make a play. Same with Death X the King. Majin makes the rotation over. But here comes Skull. This is huge for the Kappas. If they get another pick here, this is going to be a free Gold Fury. The root off the mark. Can they catch up, though? Best Gary's going to go for the knockup. There is the knockup. There's the abduct. Fields of Love come out to get the Alpha Awakened out. But here comes the Giannis Ultimate. The rotation's coming through here by Daddy Succubi. Oh, Wishy is here. And I'm not sure if Penguin knows this rotation's come out, but Majin knows. Majin sees that ultimate fire. They get, they connect with Skull. Skull doesn't have the beads up, but there's the ultimate by Majin Busha on this Kepri. Pulls him back to the tower for the safety and just nullifies this gank that Daddy Succubi tried to pull off with ultimates and a rotation over by the Bastet. But now Daddy Succubi are going to go for this Gold Fury. Gundar spots it out. They are burning it relatively quick, but this has steel potential. Gundar hovering around, showing his presence with Majin. And they go for it, and there's the steal by Kappas. And now, are they going to be able to do anything with her? Or are they going to fall? Gundar falls to Death X the King, but Penguin Pip has made the rotation over, and now Owishi has to retreat. Crazy staying in the fight, looking for something, ends up falling off. A huge Gold Fury steal there by Kappa's Food Fighter. What a great play. And that's the one thing you have to worry about when you're going to 50-50 it. As Skull picks up the solo kill on the blue Dumbo, but then Crazy hops in, lands the stun, and Wishy puts him down. But Best Gary says, sorry, I'm not going to let you get away for free. Ult in. There's one. Going to look for the other. Crazy does have the ultimate. Should be able to escape here. How will this play out? Ooh, not enough damage. But Crazy says, I don't like you invading my blue buff. Is Crazy going to go back in here? Doesn't look like the way, but Alpha Awaken has made the rotation too. 
This has become an absolute slugfest here at 14 minutes into the game. A lot of position on that left-hand side, you know, in great positioning there by Daddy Succubi looking to pull that Gold Fury, but they didn't send anybody to zone out. All they did was throw it in a portal and said, oh, they won't walk up, and they end up paying the price for that. That's a huge Gold Fury drop by them as the lead that was around 1,500 is now 150, and man, that has to feel good if you're the Kappas. Only 150 gold down, and you've lost a Tier 1 tower, so you know that gold stole on the map for you. Now the game is going to slow back down. We're going to get back to Farming Simulator, probably for the next couple minutes, if I had to assume. So this Kali has been pretty active. And same with the best Gary. Best Gary is now 5-0-0. Anywhere he goes, picks up a kill. That has to feel really good on this Pele. And I'm curious to see, you know, we see them grouping up as three again. There's the big Dumbo. There's Alpha Awaken. There's Crazy. They're looking for Skull. I don't know if Skull knows that they're back there, but Skull is in a massive, massive problem here. Surrounded by Daddy Succubi. Just trying to run away and buy time for Gary to catch up. There's a lot of damage being put onto Skull. Here comes the knockup by Gary. Gary looking for a return kill. He's going to have to retreat as Crazy's looking to hop in. Gundar has made the rotation over now. And Death X, the king, is here as well. But the Yon Assault connects. The blue Dumbo is happy with the damage that this got put out. And they're looking to chase Best Gary. Oh no, Paps left ends up getting a great blink off. Even better knock up under the tier two tower. Crazy eats a couple tower shots, but now Gundar falls as well. Oh, unfortunate pathing there. If it would have went to the, the right side here towards green buff, I think Gary lives there, but that's gonna be the first death for him. Gets taken down. Huge chase down there by Daddy Succubi to really open up the map. This should be a free Pyromancer for them now if they decide to go for it. And I'm pretty sure that should be the call as we see Wishy and Alpha Awaken making the way over. Uh, but if I know Majin Busha, he's going to make a play for this steal. And here it is. The Kepri walks up. There's the root damage. There's the tick damage. It's not just him. Penguin X Pip or Penguin Pip walks over. Daddy Succubi do secure it, but at what cost? This is going to be huge. Next, here comes the set into madness. Alpha Awaken in trouble. The blue Dumbo in trouble. There's one. Here's going to be two for Penguin Pip. Are we going to see a triple as Crazy is here too? Crazy does have the ultimate. Should be able to get that immunity for a smidge to stay alive. But now this absolutely in trouble. Doesn't have the jump. There it is. There's the immunity. But I imagine Majin's going to abduct under this tower. Doesn't have to. School puts him down. And here Death X the King makes the rotation over. This isn't a place you can be. You have to you have to let this tier one tower go. And it might be a tier two, too. If they catch out Dex like the king here, it's gonna be massive problems. There's the dash out. And now the Kappa's looking to strip away some farm here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the scorpion. I imagine they make a rotation here on the right hand side towards Wishy, who's on this blue buff. Are they gonna catch Wishy out here? Is the question. That Wishy knows. They know Wishy's here. I'm not sure Wishy knows that Majin's here, though. There it is. Majin knows now. Majin lands the abduct. Wishy is in a bad spot. If they can force out this dash or this jump, it's going to be huge. Oh, my God. Great route there by Majin. Not even on purpose. Wishy goes for the ultimate off the mark. And now they know that's gone. This is, this is the go button if you're the Kappas. It doesn't matter that it's a 3v4. You feel pretty good about you know what's down here. And now we see Daddy Succubi backing off. They decide this isn't a fight worth taking on the right-hand side of the map. And really just great stall play there by the Kappas. You know, making sure, you know, you play with your food. Maybe fight with your food a little bit. But at the end of the day, back off and do make the, the smart play to get some farm and not overstep your bounce. Oni Fury is up now, 18 minutes into the game. This is going to be the next focal point for these teams, if I had to guess, as we see Penguin making the rotation over. Uh, you know, all five members will be in the left side jungle here for the Kappa's Food Fighters, and that's not the same for Daddy Succubi. Only three members on the left side of the map. Oh, Wishy's on the right side. Giannis is back in base, does have that ultimate, can, you know, fire it off and make the rotation in pretty quickly. But this isn't the place you want to be. Wishy does teleport over. It is going to be a 5v5 now. As Oni Fury is danced around here. The question is, who is going to pull this first? Instead, they just say, hey, we're not going to pull it. We're going to fight first. They, whoever gets the pick here is really going to open it up. As Majin does go ahead and pull the Gold Fury. Crazy is behind here, and they are well aware of that. 
Standing on a ward. Gundar also just has vision on crazy here. Great roots coming through here by Penguin. And that's a very low Cupid. Descent into Madness is good. Death X the King is in trouble. Getting chunked down here. Gets knocked up. And this should be the put down. That's going to be a kill for Penguin. There's one. Gundar picks up another. Picks up the double. Crazy comes in looking to try to turn things around for his team. But unfortunately, Majin gets the ult off. And he has to jump over the wall and get out. Crazy not too happy what's going on. Gundar chasing down the blue dumble. This is a free gold fury and a triple kill for the Kurnanos. And now, what was a gold fury dance becomes an absolute massive lead. Or at least confidence lead, sorry, for the Kappa's Food Fighters. Not an actual gold lead. Only a you know, 1,800 or so gold here. Nothing too crazy. Sorry, 1,100. I can't math. Uh, but the confidence boost you get off a fight like that is absolutely huge. It really just boosts the confidence of your whole entire team. Uh, you're going to get a tier 1 and left. You're going to get a tier 2 and left. This is a ton of pressure and gold that's going to come off the map here. And now you're seeing it spiral a little bit. That 2,500 gold mark here for the Kappa's Food Fighters. Let's take a second and talk about builds. We see the ADCs both go Death Toll, both go Devos, both go Exe. You know, Death X the King goes doesn't get that for the Furious Executioner, Ferocious Executioner, into Silver Branch looking for some crit. The best Gary puts down crazy. Holy, on that right hand side of the map as I'm breaking down some builds. And Odibo here for Gundar. Both builds feeling pretty good. We do see a slight difference in the support builds. You know, Mana Core Spikes for the Kabrakan into a Spirit Deso going that more damage-oriented build. Majin's just, you know, going tank, looking to try to mitigate as much as possible here. Uh, mid laners, we see the Mirrodin and Spirit Deso here for Blue Dumbo. Just getting that cooldown, that damage, that Mirrodin's Rage feels really good. But look at the build coming out here for Skull. Just a lot of damage, anti-heal, cooldown, power, everything you want here uh, for this AMC. The Erendite chase down for the best Gary has to feel good on this. Pele going into a Titan's Bane next. Here goes the Pyromancer. Free here for the Kappa's Food Fighters. And Kali just going full attack speed. Gets the Kins. Has, oh, tier 2 Odibo has the haste and Really looking to chase down and kill targets. And really wants to shred this Cthulhu down. As that's the only Kin size they have right now. And this Bastet going this damage-oriented build. They don't. They only have one tank, and it's the Kabrakan. The Kabrakan's not a full tank either. Daddy Succubi has to be careful with these fights, with having no tanky targets to really dive in and absorb a lot of damage. Really rely on that Kali alt to mitigate some of that too. And this is the difference in the Kappa's Food Fighters and the Daddy Succubi comps, is Daddy's Food Fighters have two full tanks um, that are going to you know zone people off, pull people off CC, and you don't necessarily have the same here for Daddy Succubi. We do see the team's kind of path around Fire Giant here, looking to dance, but right now, the Kappa's Food Fighters aren't stepping up. Daddy Succubi are on the chase here. Crazy looking for Penguin. They're not aware that Majin and the best Gary are here, but Gary goes in on Wishy, gets some good damage, a little bit of a knockup here. There goes the ultimate. The portal's coming through here. Alpha Awaken comes in with a wall. There's the Fields of Love, too. The shells are out, but now the turnaround by Gundar is going to be huge here. It lands a huge ultimate. Crazy has to ult to get out. Now the best Gary. Oh, my. Majin's ultimates this game have been absolutely insane. If there was a stat for how many lives he's saved, I mean, I bet it, I think it's at least five. This crazy play here on the Kepri. Really getting full value of that ultimate. Now the Fire Giant Dance is happening. Wishy steps up. Wishy looking for the best Gary here, but I don't know that's the best move. They are going to pick him up. The jump back is huge. This is a huge opening for Daddy Sugby here as Gary's been pumping out the damage and picking off targets. And now Death X the King putting some damage onto Majin here. This is a turnaround here. Great pick here for Daddy Sugby. And now the Kappa's Food Fighters have to be very careful about the positioning. We do see Majin Busha going ahead and backing, and there the pause comes through. And while the pause is here, we are going to turn down our volume a little bit because things get a little bit loud, and I feel like I'm shouting. There we go. Let's go ahead and get this fast forward. Hopefully it's not too long of a pause. We don't really know, though. But while it's paused, I'm going to go down to four times, and I'm going to take a drink of my tea.
and hopefully everybody in the chat's doing well tonight. We do have a, a bit of a slugfest going on here. 15 to 10 in kills at 23 minutes. Really schmoving along. I'm up to time 16 speed, and this this always scares me. There we go. Okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Wow. Okay, Daddy Succubi are picking up the gold here. Skull has spotted it out and gets some good damage here onto Alpha Awaken. The dot damage is so good. Fire Giant's already at half health, and they're going to unleash it here. This is actually really good for Kappas because now they're aware... That Alpha Awaken can't step up. The ultimates are coming back up here for Daddy Sekibai. They do have to be careful here. Fire Giant's the one pulled here. They do have to be worried about the 50-50. Alpha Awaken goes in, gets the walls up. Daddy Sekibai still away. The Fire Giant Goodnar puts down Alpha Awaken. And now Crazy is looking for a kill. Isn't going to find it. Has to ult for the immunity. Will get out here. Stinger is picked up by Skull. But a huge fire giant steal here for Daddy Succubi. Alpha with a great set of walls there. Great stun. Just getting confirming damage in CC and just zoning off the damage of the Kappa's Food Fighters. Two steals in one game is pretty wild. Now Primal Fury being pulled here by the Kappa's Food Fighters. This will be free. Crazy will not be able to make it over here in time. So while they lose the Fire Giant, they go ahead and do secure some of the objective gold that's on the map. Make sure that all the neutral farm isn't going to go all the way of Daddy Succubi. Go ahead and get their own buff camps. Really just making sure, hey, you might have stolen Fire away, but there's not going to be any other farm for you other than trying to take our towers, and we're going to defend them. And I do think the Kappa's Food Fighters do defend these towers here, looking at the fact of, hey, we have a gold lead. We've done pretty well in fights so far. Yeah, we lost a fire giant, but you know, if we catch them out on wards here, we are in a defensible position as long as they're really having to fight around this Kali ultimate. And they forced Kali out of the past several fights here. So the combination of the Kali Bastet, though, you know, Crazy and Wishy are doing very good feeding off each other. So that's one thing to watch out for. But now we kind of see this 4 1 split here. Uh, for Daddy Succubi, Majin and Best Gary are looking to defend the Tier 2 tower in left, but the rest of the team is still making the way over. Wishy, a little bit out there still. And reminder, they did still wave fire, so they, they do have Fire Giant during this attack here. Alpha Awaken eating a few tower shots, trying to get his team to step up and do damage to the tower. Now it's a 5-on-5 five five here. The Bastet Cat is out. And really, look at this. Best Gary pathing along the side was looking for a pick. And I would honestly think if it wasn't for a ward there uh, that would have pinged him out anyway, uh, he might have been able to get one. Really aggressive play style here. Now, again, the staying grouped as five. You have Crazy going over here to try... And push the mid wave, and here they go. They're gonna go ahead and make the rotation to defend mid, and they're just absolutely wasting the fire giant here of Daddy Succubi. Majin gets pinged out. They are gonna go on to Majin here on this Kepri. There's the ultimate for Wishy. Wishy pulls the beetle back to back in, but there's oh my fields of love. Everything dropped here for Majin. They have to confirm it, but there's the Phantom Shell. He gets out. He gets out after they wasted all the ultimates trying to kill the bug. They did not actually get to stomp him, smush him, and send him down. And they eat a ton of damage instead. And that was every ultimate, except for the Kali ultimate, to try to squash the bug. And they didn't get it. Absolutely insane play there to bail Majin out and keep him alive after ulting and getting the, the shell off as well. Huge play there. I mean, that's, that's Fire Giant they're defending under there. And they just make it look easy. And while, yes, they have a 4,200 gold lead, I mean, still, I mean, this absolutely insane play there. As these builds are getting finished up now, builds are almost fully online. I'm assuming the last item here for Death X the King is going to be a kin size. But we'll have to see. Silver Branch is online now for this Kernanos as well. Pyro being pulled here by Death. And it's going to be secured by death as well. There was a, a effort to try to steal it by Penguin and Majin, but unfortunately they didn't have the damage to do so. So they'll have to fall back for now. Fire Giant still is a little ways out. 
We see a lot of backs coming through here for Daddy Succubi. This is the chance for Kappa's Food Fighter to go ahead and get some aggressive wards up. And they are going to get a few wards down here, really trying to make sure they have all the information they need when it comes to a Fire Giant pull. And this is just hev heavily warded here. I would like to see a ward on the back side of the pit with there being a Bastet that can jump over the wall. Um, but we'll just have to see. There it is. Oh my goodness, it's like they're reading my mind. There's the ward we wanted, the ward we needed, and we didn't deserve. And now, Crazy stepping up. Alpha Waken looking. Death X the King not far behind. Blue Dumbo a ways out. We have the Bastet on the left side of the map. Can teleport in here, but instead is just going to back and kind of go from there. Is going to push this trebuchet on the left-hand side to try to try to help with a siege on that tier 2 tower and left. Especially if they secure fire, they can run just straight there and take it. We have to see what happens here, though. I imagine Kappas are going to look for a pick this time around. I don't think they're going to let Alpha awake and walk in and keep him from getting a fire giant a second time around here. As we do hear the Bastet cats doing work, getting thrown out. And Crazy goes in here looking to try to take out the best Gary. Ends up not being able to do so. They send Alpha Awaken through the portals here. And that's one ultimate down. One less thing to worry about here if you're the Kappa's food fighters. But still, they need to get a pick. Crazy standing over this wall is going to look to jump in from behind. And this is where you have to be careful if you're the Kappa's. Skull gets looked at. Eats a ton of damage. There's the beads. The stinger is good. But now there's the Kali ultimate for the immunity. Will she dies? The question. Fields of love come out. The walls come out. There's the shell. Alpha Awaken in trouble, but a shell comes out for the best. Gary picks up a double kill in the back of the fight. There's the triple looking for possibly a Pinta here. Oh no. Penguin ends up taking it away. This will be a confirmation of a quad. Oh my goodness. Gary there. That's the that that's a Pinta if I've ever seen one here on the Pele. And now they're looking to pull Fire Giant. And this will go in favor of Kappa's Food Fighters. No one here to contest as the Deicide comes through. And that's an enhanced Fire Giant in the hands of the Kappa's Food Fighters. And now, look at this. It's going to run it down on the right-hand side here. It's Tier 2. Is this going to get burned down? The Phoenix should go too. I don't know if you even waste the time going for the mid-Tier 2 until you get this Phoenix. Phoenix is about to be down. Next thing up is gonna be the tier two in mid if I had to guess. And I'm not sure they siege anymore after that. They might go ahead and strip some jungle, get the tier two in mid if they want it, and then go for a gold fury. But honestly, they have a lot of gold in hand they can go back and, and buy with right now. Gundar is over here looking to clear an extra wave. They are just gonna pass up the mid tier two for now, regroup here in a bit. And I do think that's the safer and probably the better call here. I don't want to get too bold in this situation. You just get you just got a D aside. Your confidence is at an all-time high. It's back. Use your enhanced fire giant to, to clear off the rest of the map here shortly. And this is where Daddy Sucking by have to be having a conversation about where they want to defend. Uh, is the tier two the option of things they want to save? Do they want to wait for a Phoenix Siege and, and play it that way? And if I'm them, I'm thinking, hey, I have Kabraken Wall. Uh, I think I have to quit using these portals to try to initiate him in because they're they're picking up on it. And if anything, I think you throw... Like, if I'm them, I throw a portal over this wall making him think he's coming this way when they go for the mid-Phoenix, and I go through this door and blink behind them. But um, that's just food for thought. I do think this left-side Phoenix is what's the next thing to be looked at here by the Kappa's Food Fighters. And honestly, it limits the area of the Kabraken and the Kali of where they can come in. So this is the better option for them. They have more vision over what's going to happen here and less opportunity for people coming in from both sides. But look at the positioning here by Daddy Succubi, really playing pretty aggressive, not letting them just walk straight up to the Phoenix. There's a Bastet Cat, but crazy behind this rock is going to finally get spot out. There's the ward. There's the heart bomb off of Cupid. Crazy now in trouble. Gets chunked by about 20% health or so. And now the tier 2 tower in mid is gone. There's the through space and time. He's going to chunk a few targets. There's the stun. The best Gary is the one Crazy's looking for. There is the immunity. Crazy will get out. They will pick up the best Gary here. But Alpha Awakened 
is going to fall. Goondar just chunking away targets. That was a massive couple autos here on the blue Dumbo. Goondar ends up having to beads that Bastet cat ult. And now Wishy looking to see if they can confirm anything else. Isn't going to be able to. They are just going to back off here and strip some, strip some more farm. And not a bad play here. You're up, you know, almost 9,000 gold. Take the Pyromancer. Get the confirmed objectives you can get. Build your lead a little bit more. As most everybody has builds finished at this point and relics upgraded. It's pretty massive here for both teams. Crazy has stepped up here on this Kali. The ultimate's not up. If they catch this Kali out of position, it's going to be a bad time. Wishy is hanging out around here too. They're still trying to make sure that they don't let the Kappa's Food Fighters step too far up here. Cavus Food Fighters, go ahead and get their ward coverage out. They said, hey, you know, we're here. Let's go ahead and get everything warded for the next Fire Giant. And they're going to go ahead and back off. Let their Fire Giant fall. Buy some items and the like. Upgrade some relics. And then uh, regroup for another try here in a minute. And so far, so good here. Uh, both teams playing fairly well. Uh, really playing towards their team comps here. I think if you're Daddy Succubi, your chance to win the game really comes off of picking the best Gary and Goondar. If you can get both of them, I think you're in for a good time. Um, not that Skull's playing bad. Skull's playing very well here on this AMC. It just seems that when they dive, those are the two targets they're having the hardest time diving. And really, it's the it's the counter dive of the best Gary they need to be worked at, worried about with the Pele here. Being able to blink and then dash. You cover so much distance that you can just delete a target. There's the blink in here by Crazy. There's the Bastet Cat looking for an all off the mark here. Wishy. Wishing to have that one back. And now the positioning is not in favor of the other side here. Look at Crazy. Again, pathing behind. Wishy gets rooted along with Alpha Awakens. And you have the Kali deciding to split push and push wave a little bit. I almost wonder if that's this the commitment they should take as the split push for the Kali. Look at the best Gary. Look where look where this Pele's at. Oh, this is gonna be huge. Death gets knocked up. There's the ultimate. The fields of love come out, but it's gonna be too late. One for Gundar. One for the best Gary. There is Wishy coming through the portal. Penguin goes in the ultimate. There's the knockup for Dumbo. Boom. Skull takes him off the map. Goondar with a second kill here in this fight. And now Crazy pops the ultimate. And there it is. The best Gary throws out the Pyro Blast and calls it a day. And this is not going to be another Fire Giant. They're just going to walk it down the right-hand side, take down this weakened Phoenix, and end the game. And what a game number one here for the Kappa's Food Fighters. Uh, started off a little bit down early. Uh, which is to be expected given the comp that Daddy Succubi had. Um, but then turn it around off a couple of really good fights and a Gold Fury steal. And now are going to be ending the game and going up 1-0 in the set. So between the two teams here, I think the the one thing I would like to see going into game number two. Oh my god, my screen is so bright, dude. I'm blinded, chat. Okay, there we go. Um, you know, you look at look at these stats. I mean, 17 assists here for Majin, just insane numbers. Um, you know, four one and fifteen, four three and ten, eight three and ten, twelve three and five. I think you can't let Gary have this Pele again. Um, looking at the numbers here, I mean, the Kali. 33k is kind of what we expect. I mean, look at this. 30,000 for Goondar, 25k for this AMC, 26k for the Pele. Feeling pretty good when you look at the damage numbers across the board. Um, I think, you know, ward-wise, wards were fantastic, which is always a plus here. We love to see that. 
I don't think it was anything about like builds being a problem here. Like the builds are fine given the gods that they picked. I think the problem comes down into here you have two tanks that can peel. Here you have, uh, you know, you have a solo that's full damage. And then you have a Cabracken that, ha you know, this this isn't bad. But when you have Spear Adesso and you're still getting, like, blown up, it makes you go, okay, maybe I should have went something else. And would have made it better? No. The problem the problem you have with Cabracken, Cabracken's a W key god. And that's what Cabracken wants to do. And then you have a Kali that's Feast or Famine. And that starts becoming problematic if you can't feast. Um, so I don't think the comp or anything like that was bad. I don't think it's like a build problem. I think it's just things got out of hand for Daddy Succubi. And sometimes that's the way of the road. But now we're going to head into game number two here. Let me go pull up the match ID. But yeah, I think the I think the builds from like Daddy Sekibai were good. Like they they built things like, hey, we want to shred down Cthulhu health, so we're gonna build kin size. We have anti heal with the Shadow Steel Shuriken. I mean, the, things made sense about their builds. It's just the fact of when you go full blaster and solo, you got to be blasting. You just gotta be blasted. You know what I mean? All right. Let's hop into game number two here. Let me switch up the team names real quick. All right. So this time for the blue team, we have Daddy Succubi, and the red team will be the Kappa's Food Fighters. First ban here is going to be the AMC here. Just absolutely said, hey, we do not want to deal with the bees again. And then you have over on the other side, banned away the Hades and the Daji. Same two bans as last game. Same reasoning. Both gods are just insanely good. Uh, they burn beads. Hades has a crazy win weight. It's just easy to play and, and crazy good damage and everything else tankiness uh and other than that we get the same other two bands here we get the guan yu and the thor for daddy succubi and then again the kappa's food fighter is literally the same top three bands uh and all of them are meta picks that you don't want to deal with and this time the kepri goes to alpha awakened not wanting to have to deal with majin on this kepri again and now the Pele comes through along with the Kernanos. They're going to run part of this comp back that they got last game. We'll have to see what happens here. I don't know if Death runs the Cupid again. Not that Cupid was a bad pick. But it felt like the Fields of Love just wasn't able to do what they wanted it to do because they were trying to use it as a defense mechanism. Um, and that gets really hard to deal with when you can't do what you want. The Yu Huang is picked this time around for the blue Dumbo. Just really, really safe god uh, and does a ton of damage. And there's the Neja here too. And this comp's looking a good bit better uh, for Daddy Succubi here. And it's going to be Majin Busha locking in the Yamoja here. That's going to be nuts. Oh my goodness. The Yamoja gets through... Oh, I can't wait till the end of this game. I bet we're going to see some dumb healing numbers, chat. That's what I guess. And they say, hey, you know who does really good against walls and is a really, really safe hunter that's good? Charybdis. Um, you know, that three basically is a get-out-of-jail-free card. And it goes under walls. I mean, just really, really good. Charybdis, dumb. I've said it. I like it. Good ban. Baba Yaga, again, not wanting to have to deal with that huge amount of damage coming out of the mid lane. Um, they said, hey, we dealt with AMC last game. We don't want to deal with a Baba Yaga game, too. And I think that's fair. Jibalonke, the last ban here for the Kappa's Food Fighters. Curious to see that. I mean, very good. The Bolas allow with really good clear. 
works great with the meta builds right now in ADC. Also can just turn the lights out. I mean, uh, they're just a lot going good for them. And now you have a CC immune dash uh, once the windup happens. Overall, really good ban here. Just surprised to see a ban, to be honest. Uh, but I do believe Dextex the King is known for playing it, so maybe that's why. And Achilles is the last ban here for Daddy Succubi, a changeup from the first game in this last slot. And I think Achilles is a good band. You don't want to let that get through and start getting on an execute rampage against this Kepri. And we're going to see the Cthulhu Ram back here for Penguin Pimp. And right now, they don't have something that says, hey, we're going to shred your Cthulhu's health down. Even last game when they did, Cthulhu got to live. Are they gonna are they gonna lock in the chalk? Are they gonna do it? Oh man. Mad respect that they lock in the chalk solo. That's all I have to say. I I don't think it's the pick. It's a good pick if you can get the CC working for you. And you have the auto attack slow. Ishtar is gonna be the carry this game. And I love Ishtar, so I have nothing bad to say about this. I think the ultimate is insane. You have a really good dash, allows you to play aggressive and also get out. Um, the one provides a lot of different utility. And I think it's just overall, it's a fun god to play, which I enjoy. I don't know if it's a great god in carry to play, but it is a fun god to play. Uh, Kukulain, aka Budget King Arthur, is the decision of being locked in here against the Cthulhu, which I do like better than the Chalk. So let's... Let's be happy about that. And the last pick here is going to be who do we want for mid? Unless Kurnos is going mid and we go with a different ADC. I do wonder. I would love to see a soul. It's a Hoi. All right. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some, you know? Oh, yeah. By the way, Albion Giants playoffs start this week. Did somebody say playoffs? Playoffs? I'm excited, dude. Maybe I'll be casting some playoff games. Who knows? Catch me out here casting playoffs, dude. I'll cast playoffs some way, somehow. Whether it's here, there, everywhere, whatever. All right, chat. We have another Kepri locked in. You guys know what that means. Oh, nope. I didn't start the song over. We have another one. Well, we had a co-caster tonight, JJ. Uh, the problem is they fell asleep. So, it is what it is. All good. They told me, like, hey, I'm tired. I'm not going to be able to make it. And I was like, oh, dang. So, all good. I usually try to have one lined up. Or some days I'm like, yo, I'm just doing it myself. It just depends on the vibe I'm feeling. Oh, do I have a DM? My bad. I didn't reply to this. Oh, uh, okay. All right, back to this. S-U-P-P-O-T. Oh, hey, I hope he's on my team. Capri. Capri Bezos. S-U-P-P-O-T. Oh, hey, I hope he revives me. Capri. Capri Bezos. Come on, Capri. You can do it. Release OP and there's something to it. Shell us now. When I die, you're the rising dawn now. War flag and benevolence and gift of the gods can get abducted, steal their kills, take their titan. Come on, Capri, get them! I'm still sad. The other song I wrote about Don Zimbaro, I can't post on SoundCloud because it's DMCA'd. All right, let's get everybody moved around here. And then I'm going to respond to JJ. Uh, Jonathan, we should put all the top teams from all the Smite Leagues in Attorney. They did that once. Or I don't remember if we I don't remember if we did it once when I was an admin, or if we uh, talked about it. But it was in the talks, and the 
top level teams from other divisions said no. If I remember correctly, they didn't want to play in it. Ooh, double death toll Devo starts this time for the ADCs for Kappa's Food Fighters, and I like that. Let's go. Again, we see the Benevolence in Sentinel's difference here for the supports, just like last game. And we do see Neja like to go for Bumba's over the Eye of the Jungle here. We'll see how that pans out. Warrior's Axe for Penguin, and finally, Wishy decides to go with the Blue Stone this time around. Same starts this time, nothing too crazy. Uh, should be relatively same clear here for both teams. I talked to supports, man. Supports, quit buying hog, quit babying the ADC. That's my TED talk, or just save it for second purple. You know, that's what I like. I'm a weird ADC, dude. All right, nothing crazy happening. Level two goes over to Kappa's Food Fighters, uh, which is slightly different from last game. Are they going to get good poke onto this Alpha Awakened here? Great Riptide there by Majin. Over on the right side, we do have a 2v2 happening. The best Gary looking for first blood. He's going to find it onto Wishy. Now Penguin's having to run away from Crazy, but the root might be good here. Crazy gets the Sash in, but that might caught Crazy the life on this Neja. Is the Neja going to be able to get away? Great Ring Toss. Crazy does end up falling. Best Gary picks up a double kill here. This is not what you want to see after the performance that Best Gary had in game one if you're the daddy sucky by. Oh, man. What an insane start here on the Pele. Scepter fight ends up going... Did it go the way of daddy sucky by here? I believe it did, and it did. Death X the King decides to pick it up. Nice little fight over the scepter there. We love to see it. Now the abduct going in. They get Goodnar and the abduct. Didn't say able to leap out. So that has to feel pretty good. And look at this. Best Gary is clearing oracles. But I'll tell you this. There's a high possibility that a gank's going into left lane or mid. We'll have to see which way it goes. Yeah, that's a great sash here on the skull. Crazy. Looking for something else here. Dashes away, avoids that root. Really good play here by Skull. Uh, just to avoid all that damage after getting the Sash coming that way. Best Gary is going to drop red buff here. And this, this jungle lead is going to get going pretty quick here, I think. And we're not really seeing it on the XP side of stuff, but we will see it on the gold side. Majin barely gets out there with his life against this duo lane of Alpha Awaken and Death X the King with the Kepri-Ishtar combo. But over on the right side of the map, Wishy goes for the invade, confirms it, I believe. But now, Gary and Penguin are trying to fight into it. The transformation will save the life of Wishy, and there comes the pause. Um... Let's see. I'm afraid to put it on eight times speed. Maybe I put it on 16, see how it goes. All right, everything's fine. We didn't miss anything. Holy dude, I hate, I think, putting it on 16 times speed always scares me. Great ultimate here by Skull, looking to confirm a kill. And that's a great push out here by Skull. Is this denying a ton of farm now for Blue the Dumbo? Blue the Dumbo. And this is going to be... Uh, this is going to spike into a great lead here in mid. And this is why we've seen this Kurnidos pick several times. Dual lane over here. Not quite level 5. Going to group up with with Gary here. Nothing's up for them to take, though. But they are looking for a gank here. Here's the pathing by Gary. It's going to look to initiate in. There's the dash in. There's the ultimate. Slightly off the mark, but still going to look for something. Gets good damage off on both Alpha and Death X the King, but not going to find anything more than that. Oh, if that ultimate hits, I think things go Gary's way yet again. 
Skull gets pulled up here with the Neja ultimate. And now the dueling dragons come out, but they're off the mark. Skull will live to see another day. These mid laners, both level six, really just farming to their heart's content. Majin pathing the way over here. Gonna go ahead and take out a ward, get that 50 gold. It's gonna feel pretty good. And ward the enemy red while they're at it. Death eating a lot of minion damage here. Has to be careful. Gets marked and stunned. It could spell a bad time, especially with Hoi ultimate up. There it is. The da- Oh, wow. There's the stun. There's the jump. No ultimate used here by Gundar. Decides that it wasn't worth it yet. Now, Wishy getting attacked at their own speed buff here. There's the transformation ultimate. It might scare them off for a smidge, but... Gary putting some work in over here on the right side of the map. Really trying to put Wishy under some pressure. And now, you have Alpha Awakened and Crazy over here to try and do something, but instead they back off after they see that Penguin and the best Gary have left. Now we're kind of back to some, some typical farming here. Only a 400 gold difference, relatively close, nothing too crazy going on for either team. Uh, despite two kills going over to the Kappa Speed Fighters early, the Daddy Second by have rebounded quite well, not letting anything else go the favor of the Kappas, and they will confirm their own Scorpion. It was a scary time there as the Neja almost fell uh, to the to the Scorp. Death looking to take a fight here, but there's the Mark again. The Beads comes through, but guess what? The Mark wasn't used for a stun. Ishtar throws out those, those daggers to get the stun, but isn't going to be able to find anything other than that, other than a nice escape. Alpha Awaken stepping up, looking for some cup control. And Skull is putting in a ton of work here, really focusing out the blue Dumbo, pushing him under the tower here. But the level lead is in favor of blue the Dumbo right now, as this red buff is coming up and the Kappas are here to invade. Skull now making the way over. I crazy and Alpha Awakened are already there though. Majin and Gary could be in trouble. There's the River's Rebuke to try to zone him off. There's the Abduct. Great Sash. Best Gary has to get out. Majin rip tiding away, trying to get out of this, not wanting to deal with any more from this Neja Kepri combo. Skull running away here as well. Gary picks up their own red buff here, and Majin's able to get out too. Great play here by the Kappas to confirm their own red buff and just get everybody out there as it looked pretty dire for the best Gary if uh, anything else went his way. And Majin got out of a sticky situation too, thanks to Yamoja being Yamoja with Riptides. We are seeing a little bit of a different build here for the blue Dumbo this time around. Good. Looking to go the Warlock Staff as we now see an invade of the scorpions go off and it will be confirmed here both jungles are going to crush her that second her first item here yemojo preventing <laughs> potential ring bounces is kind of kind of crazy Other than that, this is kind of slow playing the game here. Daddy Succubi really did slow down the game after it was a fast start by the Kappas. Majin is looking to drain this obelisk. Gary ults in on the Pele, looking for some... some oh, no, didn't ult in. Just blinked in, it looks like. Looked to try to confirm some damage here on death and isn't going to. Is just going to walk away. Daddy Succubi are wanting the ult, though. I crazy could be in trouble. No, the ultimate off the mark here for the Kurnos. Goodnar is trying to confirm purple buff. Gary goes in on the blue Dumbo and now goes in on Death X the King too. Tons of damage going out there, but the revive was thrown on Death X the King. It's crazy. Picks up Gary now has Goodnar in the air. Goodnar is going to eat a dueling dragons too. A ton of damage going out here and Goodnar will fall as well. 
Majin makes the way over. I don't know if there's going to be anything else to find. It's a lot of ultimates used here. By his daddy Sekibai. The investment was worth it, though, as they did pick up two kills for nil. As Wishy and Penguin over here. Still fighting over in the soul lane, doing what soul laners do. Having a slap fest. Sometimes the way of the road. Majin back to draining obelisk charges to confirm a trebuchet for his team. And we do see the Kukulain decide to go for a bulwark before finishing out any more part of the mana, mana core spikes. Didn't want to have to deal with that. But double mana core spikes is being worked on here uh, for Daddy Succubi. Looking at it on the Kepri and the Kukulain. Despite that item being nerfed, it's still very, very good. And now we're back to a little bit of a farm simulator, but over on the right side of the map. Wishy under attack here. Gary trying to finish this off, but just can't confirm it. Finally does. Penguin says, I'm going to take this kill. I crazy now might be in a little bit of trouble here, but should get out of this Nejon. and does end up walking away under the tower. No, ends up walking back up. Ooh, it's a scary time. The skull walk forward looking for that kill. Pyromancer is what's being pulled here now by the Kappa's food fighters. And I'm not sure anybody can really step up for Daddy Succubi. And confirm it besides Alpha Awaken. Could try to throw something over the wall. Ends up not doing that and just ends up have to walk away. Luckily, doesn't get caught out on any extra damage there. And a great little play there by the Kappa Food Fighters to, to get a pick and then just go straight to Pyro and look to try to do something here. They are down by a smidge of gold. But that should be okay. The Blue Dumbo is looking for these Oracles, wants that vision for his team. Other than that, it's a pretty pretty standard game thus far. We do see Kurnos is electing to go the crit build. Went ahead and bought Wind Demon already. Uh, we'll see if the tanks decide to respond to that in any particular way here for Daddy Succubi. Do they decide that they want to go the Spectral or not? We did see a Spectral in the game I casted last night with no crit being built on the other side. Uh, if anything, it scared them away from wanting to build crit as it was already in the game. So there is that. Other than that, just a pretty chill game so far. Kin's XE different for the carries. See a male renewal here for Majin. It's going to feel really good. The healing on the emoji is going to be insane this game. Mark my words. Uh, Transcendence is being stacked here for I Crazy, which is going to be feeling really good once it's fully stacked. Other than that, nothing too crazy happening. The Kukulain on Daddy Succubi also has a male renewal. We'll have to see how that pans out. Gary blinks in. They said, hey, the blue Dumbo is up in the air with this dash. You got to take him out. And that's exactly what happens on the fall back in. Gets put down. But Gundar was taken out on the backside here by the Ishtar. And I crazy. And it's a 3v4 right now as they wait for Penguin to make a rotation over. Daddy Succubi say, hey, we're going to pull the Gold Fury. And we don't think there's anything you can do about it. And I don't think that's true. Penguin teleported in from behind. They don't know he's there. The sit in the madness is good. What's even better is all the damage that comes through. Kappa Speedfire still with the Gold Fury. And then they let one fall, but they're going to turn it around. Alpha Awaken falls. I Crazy falls. Oh, Wishy is on the run. That scary did fall with that engagement, but I think that's okay when you pick up a Gold Fury and two kills. Has to be. Feeling pretty good. There's the ultimate in the lockdown there by oh wishy but it's not going to really do much else other than keep them from progressing further which i don't know how much further de the kappas wanted to go there you have to worry about the dueling dragons here oh my goodness off the mark you wong if can get set up if can play back is going to get a lot of damage here uh, you have the warlock staff into divine ruin the anti-hive is going to feel pretty good 
Uh, if you can get it, if you can get it onto the targets, that's the big thing you have to worry about here. This Yu Huang, if it, it, the damage is coming out, and if you stand in this fire for too long or anything like that, you will pay the price. So definitely food for thought here. The fact that the dash went off and Gary was there was just really unfortunate. Other than that, pretty stellar play here by the blue Dumbo playing playing this Yu Huang. It's nice getting good farm, playing relatively safe. But so far, Death X the King is 2-0-1 on this Ishtar. Now building into crit, so we'll see how that ends up going here. Looks like the best Gary is building this Erendite yet again, and that's going to feel really good on the chase down. Pele with chase down after an ultimate is just kind of insane. See I Crazy making the rotation here towards Penguin. Besides, nothing, nothing's going to come of it, so backs off. Now we're kind of just back to looking for anything in the neutral farm here. Pushing waves. Over on the solo side, we do see them fighting away. We have Penguin versus Wishy. Poke versus Poke. Hand versus Hand. The slap fight does continue. It's a pretty large grouping on this left side of the map by Daddy Sekibai. Game one, when we saw him do this sort of thing, they would immediately go gank a lane hereafter. But right now, there's nowhere for them to gank. Look at this over on the right side of the map. Oh, Wishy drawing a lot of attention as Penguin's here. Skull is here as well, and Skull just runs down the solo laner of Daddy Sekibai. And also chase them under the tower, just really trying to get a kill here. I crazy on the way in, looking for the ring bounce. Nothing comes of it. Skull still playing up here, and it's really aggressive play here by the ADC of the Kappa's Food Fighters. Really surprised. Sorry, the mid laner. Really surprised to see that kind of aggression played on the hunter here. The Pyromancer is pulled. Alpha Awakens looking for it, but Cal uh, Food Fighters lock down the Pyromancer. Eat a dueling dragons, and now the best Gary could be in trouble. There's the ultimate to disengage as a defense mechanism, but now Penguin is up in the air. Wishy does the blink, looking to try to get best Gary. The knockup is not good. Oh, Wishy is going to dive the tower here, and Pele's is not fast enough to get away. Now Penguin's in trouble here, and this went from a Pyromancer pickup that was actually pretty good to a concerned Penguin, and Penguin waddles his way to the tier two tower only to fall down to the gray screen. And this is 17 minutes in. The Daddy Succubi could look to pull Fire Giant here, and that's exactly what they do as a Sash goes into Majin. Skull in the mid lane. I don't know if we'll make a rotation over, and no, they don't have enough damage for the Fire Giant, so they end up dropping it. Majin chilling around a corner, waiting, biding his time. Is Skull doing a similar thing with the Tier 1 Tower, saying, hey, if you guys all want a group, that's cool, but let me hit you with some autos. Why wait? Now has the Wind Demon, Shadow Steel, Shuriken combo. Uh, Anti-heal is online. We do see both the Mana Core Spikes now finished over here for Daddy Succubi. Uh, along with the uh, Mana Core Spike here for Penguin Pimp. We'll have to see what Majin elects to do. I'm assuming Fade Blessed Hoops is going to be on the menu here, though. Those heals just become absolutely insane uh, once you get that item. You already have just a god that heals very well. Add that in, and man, let me tell you, going to be having a good time. That's for sure. Now we're back to farming. Everything kind of just slowed down here. Gold Fury is coming back up. The Kappa's Food Fighters could look towards it. I don't know if they have enough vision to want to do it right now. They definitely are going to want to get a pick and then pull. We'll see how that goes, though. All ultimates are up here besides the River's Rebuke from Majin. As Neja does the take up, take down for Skull, but then it's going to come down in his damage. The beads, good, but not good enough to get him out. As Skull picks up the kill with the help of the best Gary. And now you have a three man grouping over here towards the Gold Fury. Gundar forces out Death X the King towards the tower. And now this is a Gold Fury pull here by the Kappas. They do have to be worried about Death X the King here with this ultimate. And Alpha is here too. Kappas confirm another objective. 
even though it was about to be contested, they say, hey, we don't care about the 50-50. We feel like we can confirm it. So they just burn it down with this double ADC comp. They continue just to shred away the objectives. Now have built almost a 3,000 gold lead. About 2,700 to be more precise uh, in favor of the Kappa's Food Fighters. Now, oh, wishy getting chased down here. Same thing with over here, the blue Dumbo getting chased down. Death X the King picks up a solo kill on Dundar over the right-hand side. Sorry, the left-hand side, even though the suns were dropped. That's a huge play for Death X the King. Isn't going to stay to try to get tower since the wave is gone. But that's a massive pickup. Level 19 to level 17. And Ishtar is on a race to 20. Has to feel really good at 3-0-1. Death X the King just playing an impeccable game this game on the Ishtar. Um, and the build is the crit build. So when you are when you are a hunter that doesn't have the crit build versus a hunter that does have the crit build, uh, things aren't going to be fun for you. You're going to get absolutely blown up. Uh, that's kind of what happened there. Oh, Wishy and Penguin. Still still slapping each other away over in the in the solo lane. Take a look at player damage numbers here. Leading the way is I Crazy, followed by Death X the King. And then there's a, a pretty significant gap uh, to Skull and Penguin. Uh, I'd say the biggest concern here is the fact that Gundar is at 3,500 damage, just well behind everybody else. But that's not necessarily bad while you're over in duo. You don't really fight anybody besides the support and the carry. And most of the time, you're just fighting the carry early on. So. A little bit hard to get damage online if you're only fighting one person and they're poking you out. So we'll see how that that storyline plays out here in a bit. Crazy hits the sash, but Gary does the the little juke around there. Goes for the ultimate off the mark to put I Crazy down, but they did get a Kepri ultimate out of it, and that has to feel pretty good if you're the Kappa Food Fighters. That's one thing less thing you have to deal with, and honestly, it's like having a six person if you get that revive off. So. It just has to feel good that that doesn't exist at this current point in time. But they need to make a play off of it. But look at this. I Crazy has been split pushing a little bit in mid. Gets the tier 1 tower and pushes a wave towards tier 2. As the Dumbo again flies up in the air and gets caught by Gary on the way down. Now Alpha Awaken could be in trouble. Is going to get to back off. But on the backside of this, Wishy being looked at as Penguin blinks in. Now Gary chasing down. There's the root. The ultimate to save and get the CC immunity is going to be huge here. Penguin teleporting towards the mid tier two, looking to save it from I Crazy. And now you have the best Gary and Majin pulling the Pyromancer. Skull has made the way in against the two tanks. And the tanks steal it away. Daddy Succubi pick up the steal here and get the steal of the Pyromancer to go their favor at 22 minutes into the game. Has to feel pretty good as that gold lead that the Kappa's Food Fighters had is slowly but surely dwindling away. I crazy makes the rotation here looking for penguin pimp. It's gonna get a good sash off. There's the dash. Gundar looking and thinking, hey, is there something I can do as he gets taken up in the air by the Neja? I crazy makes a good play there. There's the river's rebuke. There's the beads by I crazy. The send the madness is good. Here comes the damage. But guess who's here? Alpha awakens here. Crazy has to be taken down if they want to do something in this fight, but Crazy still alive. Finally gets put down by Majin Busha. Oh, Wishy teleports in. They're looking for the fight. Daddy Succubi say, you could push us until this point, but let's now fight while Penguin has no health whatsoever. It's going to heal back up thanks to Majin Busha and his soon-to-be mana core spikes. Slowly but surely working on those. The best Gary did make the rotation over. And I would assume is going to look for some type of blink ult in. Instead, no, just going to walk in. They have no idea he's there. Gets the knockup. Absolutely huge. The blue Dumbo gone. Kepri gone. Oh, my goodness. Death X the King has the ultimate on him. But guess who is going to die next? Death X the King is the who. And that's a double kill for the best Gary. And there's Owishi falling to Gundar. Another Dia side here, just like game one. And there's a lot of things up on the map to take. You have a Scepter up. You have a Gold Fury up relatively soon. There's the Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower and left you could probably get away with. Overall, it's a lot to choose from. And it is going to be a grouping for the Gold Fury here to look to push that lead that they have. And I think this is the right call. As soon as it spawns. 
And I crazy doesn't even bother trying to come over for this. Just lets it go. Best Gary hits 20 off of that. And this uh, there's a massive lead in mid for Skull here. Skull is level 20 to the level 16. Blew the Dumbo. Uh, and that's to feel pretty bad here if you're the Yu Huang. But again, now we're just going to go back to farming for the next minute or two before the Fire Giant stance breaks out here. I assume that's going to happen sooner rather than later as this is the next objective on the map that should be looked at. Will it be looked at? Not sure. Should it be looked at? Absolutely. Scorpion goes down in favor of Daddy Succubi. They get their own Scorpion here. But look at the best Gary's positioning. Looks and sees, hey, crazy's on these camps. Is there anything I can do? The answer is no. But the thought was there. But the five-man grouping from Daddy Sucky by now, really strong to be grouped like this. Uh, between the four here and the one in right lane, slowly working their way there, just in case they need to collapse. And look, the Alpha Awakened and Death. Nope, Death ends up staying. They both were backing. And Death hits the King, dashes in here. That's the dash, and honestly... Oh, man. I tell you what. If Gary was there, that's a dead Ishtar, if I had to guess. But, oh, wishy. Is he eating a ton of damage? I crazy already ate a ton of damage, too. The River's Rebuke is out. Here comes all the damage. The suns are good. Oh, wishy is somehow running away. Death X the King, insanely low. And now it's the Kappa's food fighters looking to see is there anything else they can get before they pull this fire giant. There's the knockup. Blue Dumbo, that's the dash. There's nothing you have to worry about on that front now. This is going to be a relatively free pull here for the Kappa's Food Fighters. Alpha Waken looking to walk up and do something, but right now, there's a whole lot of nothing to do. And there it is, Kappa Food Fighters. Go ahead and confirm the Fire Giant, and now they pick up a kill on the back side of it. They decide that they're going to let the 50-50 happen, and it goes their way this time around. They also have a Treb pushing this right-hand tower. Absolutely insane. Crazy looking to run away. They do have to be careful here. Penguin goes the right lane. And now Majibusha tanks the tier 1 tower in mid. And I imagine it's going to fall fairly soon. And what's next? The tier 2 tower in mid is getting pushed down. In the right side, you have Cthulhu plus a Treb pushing that down. Just insanely fast turnaround there. Get the gold fear and immediately strip away two towers working on a third here and that gold lead jumps up to 10k now at 27 minutes where a lot earlier it was a, a good bit closer as that second tier two tower falls crazy looking to fight in a penguin here and i don't know that it's something that you can do I crazy looking for something still chasing down here looking to see can he catch skull or gundar heading to this red buff and skulls the one that catches him gets the ultimate off luckily the iframes from the sash are good the ultimate gets the neja out now there's the other red buff pull oh wishy standing over the wall here looking to do something there's the root there's the Ishtar ultimate. Doesn't matter. Blue the Gumbo gets put down by the Best Gary. Best Gary comes in. That's a great ultimate here by Alpha the Awakened. Best Gary picks up another kill, though, onto the Kuka lane. And the Best Gary looking for the chase, looking for this Ishtar. And I think the Best Gary's going to be able to catch unless Crazy comes around the corner. Huge knockup, but it doesn't actually end up hitting because of the iframes on the Sash. And the Best Gary's the one that ends up paying the price. For the two free kills that I thought were going to go the way of the Kappa's Food Fighters. Instead, it doesn't. Penguin offering to go the Hero's Axe here with 30% crowd control. And anytime you're affected by hard crowd control, it gives your ally a shield. This can happen once every eight seconds. Really good item.
um, if you can fit it into your build and make it work. Uh, I know a lot of people go the other axe, but still pretty good. I do you see a bulwark? I'm assuming what's going to be a pesty for the Cthulhu here. Unless we're getting trolled and it's a talisman of energy. I do subscribe to that newsletter too, but we'll have to see. Majin does have the Fabless tubes and the Prid one here are going to feel pretty good on this Yamoja getting that cooldown, that shield bubble pop, extra healing. What more could you ask for on the Yamoja? All the things you want to hear. Um, curious to see if Death X the King decides not to go the Deathbringer, decides the double ult's enough. So I'm wondering, is he going to go for Death's Tempered? We'll have to see. That's what I like to go. But right now you have Skull on this Kurnos at 4 0 and 7. Kappa's Food Fighters take away the Primal Fury there. So we'll see which one ends up working back better. The the triple crit or the double crit? I think double crit with Death Temper is actually pretty good. If you're doing triple kit, I think going Death Embrace is fun. But that's his personal preference. And like, are you going to kill minions to stack the Death Tempered? Because Death Tempered can be insane. That item is sort of nuts. I think if you get it fully stacked, it's like 30% extra damage, which is just wild. And here comes the siege of the tier two tower. Minions now coming in here. Kappa's food fire gonna go ahead and take out this tier two. I'm oh, sorry, not the Kappa's food fighters. Daddy Succubi are gonna take out this tier two. Holy smokes, chat. I was looking at the, I was looking at the treb over here when I said that. So I was thinking, oh, it's red. Um, penguin dives in here, goes straight into the Scent of Madness, getting off a ton of damage here. The river bukes are good. Zoning out I crazy. Now I crazy is waking the way in, but look at this flank by Gary. Gary, this could be absolutely monstrous here. Gets a huge knock up. There's one for Gundar. Looking for more. The blue gumbo is in absolute trouble. Gundar with a double. This could be Gundar with a triple in a second. Skull picks up one. The blue dumbo goes up in the air, but I don't think it matters. Getting chased down here by Penguin Pimp. I crazy gets absolutely chased out. And guess what's up just in time? It's Enhanced Fire Giant. Great plays here by the Kappa's Food Fighters. And there's the Enhanced Fire now down, and they immediately pull it. They do have to worry about Crazy trying to step up and hit an insane ring bounce, but other than that, Sash off the mark on the Penguin Pimp. I think they're going to be fine as the fi Enhanced Fire goes their way, and they immediately come running looking for Crazy. Almost confirms it there. If that knockup goes off, I think it's I think it's GG's on that front for I crazy. Alpha Awaken is now responding. Death X the King now responding. Kukulain responding in the next second. And then blew the Dumbo almost up. So we are looking at a potential 5v5 fight at the Titan here. If a single person gets taken out here by Daddy Second Bye, they have to hope it's a trade. Because um, if it's an advantage in favor of the Kappas, it, there's nothing they can do to stop them at this point, I don't think, with there being a 17,000 gold lead in favor of the Kappas. Though I do I do like the tenacity of Daddy Succubi to step up and chase them out of the base. I like that that's the route you know, they take about it. They're like, hey, we're not going to get pushed around. We're not going to just sit here and... and let you win. We're going to make you work for it. And I always appreciate that. I think it's a good mental to have. As we have a, a three-man grouping currently, some late stragglers here by Daddy's Succubi. And instead, the Kappa's food fighter said, hey, we tried this last time with, you know, starting off the engagement in game one. Uh, it didn't pan out well, so we're going to wait a minute and let you guys make a mistake. That's exactly what they're waiting for. They back up. And they're just waiting for any opportunity to get opened up for them to get a pick here or more. It just depends when relics are up for both teams. Right now, waiting on some relics here for the Kappa's food company. Same thing for Daddy Succubi, just waiting it out. Wishy eats a ton of health here. And now they just wait. They're just buying the time because fire minions are about to be pouring into the base of Daddy Succubi, and they're going to have to make a decision who is going to go defend. But before that even gets to happen, oh, Wishy is put down in the dust here by Gundar. Penguin goes in. The best Gary goes in. Tons of damage are just popping off here. 
Elon Musk. Why did I say Elon Musk? I was thinking about Elon Musk. I'll talk about that in a second, though. Um, Death of the King gets put down here. I crazy. Boom. Done. And now Majin diving. Did, did Majin buy an item? No, okay. I thought he bought an item. Dives the fountain. And this should be game set match. Sorry, I was thinking Daddy Succubi, and I thought about the memes I've seen on Twitter involving Elon Musk, and like I, they just combined in my brain. I've seen a lot of uh, funny memes. Yo, that was that was a good game too. There, put together by Capus Food Fighters, ends out the game. Let's take a look at builds, talk about a few things like we normally do. Um. And that will be the end of the cast for tonight. But let's take a look at some things here. Uh, great build here by the best Gary. This Magi's Revenge. I'm a huge advocate of picking up Magi's. And Magi's Revenge feels super good on Hunters, especially when you have Erudite, because they pop your CC bubble. Haha, <laughs> funnies. I run you down. You get 10 more, 10 percent more damage, and you get 20% more movement speed towards them. You literally just run them down. Uh, sick build. <laughs> really fun time here. Really enjoy the Hero's Axe. I think it's a, a sick item in, in solo right now. You go ahead and you convert physical prots to... 50% uh, of your physical prots are converted to magical. Feels really good here uh, with Amulet of Stronghold. And then this build, I've been testing it. It slaps. I've been doing it with Death Tempered, but it's it's good no matter what. Um, I've tested it both with upgrading Exe and upgrading uh, Inven or to Envenom or Malice. I don't know which I like better yet. Um... This build, just good. You're going to shred health if they build tanky. You don't need... You're, you're dealing with the tanks with this build. And then, again, Majin. This is... The, I mean, 1014, 60 and 11. Crazy stat lines here. Uh, Yu Huang goes 06 and 3. Just, just cannot get off the... Can't get any side of team fight around him to allow him to do what he wants to do as a Yu Huang good build here. I'm curious about why male renewal here for the Kuka Lane was the choice in the spirit robe. Uh, Alpha the Awaken. I would have liked to see this be a Magi Shelter. Picks up the Divine Ruin. Kind of questionable. Uh, probably not something I go for unless I'm hugely up in support. Um, I Crazy. Not a bad build. I think this build's good. I think with Neja, you have to worry about being in the trope of like if you're full damage, you're going to get blown up. So sometimes it's worth going a little bit bruiser. Like, I think bruiser jungles help right now, but you're into this Pele that's shredding. So, like, this this has to be a thing. I wonder if this is better with Eye of the Jungle, though. I think if you switch this to Eye, this might work out better. Um, and then Ishtar, again, this is meta-ish meta -ish build. Uh, Silver Branch here. Not a huge fan of Silver Branch, but I think it's good either way. Look at that. 10k healing. Insane, dude. Insane. Alright, well that's it for the smite games. Those were fun. Those were a good time, chat. Hope everybody had a good night. Hope everybody enjoyed. Um, as always. If you have questions, suggestions, let me know. I'm always down to cast games. Always feel free to reach out if you need some games casted. Uh, just DM me and uh, I'll see what I can do. If I can make it happen, I will let you know. Uh, along with that, if uh, if you need, if you know anybody that needs a coach or anything like that, hit me up. I'm happy.